This is my daughter, Anka, who's sitting in the back. When she turned 17 months, I finally had the courage to tell my pediatrician that I was concerned with her speech. But my doctor's immediate response was, don't worry, multilingual kids usually have a slow start anyways, so why don't we wait for a few months and see? I explained to my doctor that this has been an ongoing pattern, and now Anka is showing word regression. She used to know words like bubble and doggy, and now she can't even recognize them. So I, I plead with her to get us to a speech therapist for confirmation. You see, I started tracking Anga's development since the day she was born, because I know that during her first thousand days of life laid the foundation for the rest of her life. During that time, her brain will grow to 80% of her adult size. And during that time, her brain is making more than a million neuron connections every single second. So if something's off, it is critical to get Anga screened, assessed, and referred into an early intervention service right away. Then my pediatrician told me to, um, let's start with a screening tool and then we can see. Well, I guess she didn't realize that I already tested Anga with that screening tool. And in fact, with a couple of different screening tools that are recommended by the American Academy of Pediatrics. The Academy actually recommends all doctors to screen for developmental delays. However, nationally, only 50% of them actually perform these screenings. Why? Because these screening tools usually are expensive. The doctor has to be trained on its individual scoring methods. And the doctors are used to eight minute wild child visit. So it's almost impossible to add on another thing on their busy agenda. A few hours later, I got an email message from my pediatrician saying that Anga is indeed on the borderline area for communication, fine motor, and growth motor areas. And her recommendation was for me to go home with Anga using an activity booklet that she sent, and she will follow up with Anga in the next month. So great. Originally, I thought that Anga was only behind in speech, but now it was also extended to motor skills. And I have to wait an entire month just to get a confirmation that she is delayed. Not even an evaluation, just confirmation. So I immediately start reading through the booklet that she sent. In the 104 pages, there's exactly one activity that is age appropriate for Anga's speech issue. There had to be more I could do as a parent. So this time I put things down in writing. I emailed my pediatrician and I said, I remain very concerned with Anga's progress. We actually been practicing these activities for months now and they haven't been effective. I urge her for the second time to please refer us to a speech therapist for a evaluation. This time she finally agreed, thank God. At the same time, I called the director of a parent support group that helps families with disabilities. These support groups actually exist in every single county. So I told the director over the phone that, oh my God, I cannot believe I have failed as a mother and as a child psychologist. And now it's happening to my own child. I felt so lost and so hopeless. The director confirmed that help was on the way and now the best thing I could do for Anka is to self-refer into early intervention services. These intervention services actually exist in every state through a national mandate called the Individuals with Disabilities and Education Act. If Anka was detected and diagnosed with delays before the age three, then she will be eligible for free state services. That's including speech therapists that will even come to my house to deliver these therapies. However, if Anga is diagnosed with delays after age three, then we will have to go to our school district for help, where there are extremely limited resources. So a couple of weeks later, Anga was able to get an evaluation with the speech therapist that my pediatrician referred us. 
after, after multiple visits, Unga was finally confirmed as between low and moderate risk for speech delays. The therapist's recommendation was for me to go home with Anga with a sheet of activities that I can practice with Anga. And if I don't see an improvement in two to three months, then I can go back to her for another evaluation. Now, this is the second time a medical expert telling me, let's wait for a few months and see what happens. It wasn't until a couple months later that we finally able to get Anga into a second evaluation through the early intervention service. But because they have no communication with my pediatrician or with the speech therapist that we already saw, I have to go over my entire medical journey and in realistic world, my entire medical pain all over again. This time, they use a different evaluation tool and was able to diagnose Anga within an hour. The verdict? Anga was five months behind in speech. However, not delay enough for her to qualify for the state services. So let me summarize here. I waited four months to get evaluation. Begged my pediatrician twice to get a com evaluation. Saw two different pediatrician, uh, two different speech therapists, both through my state and through our insurance company, and consulted multiple parent education groups. The conclusion was my mommy gut instinct was correct. That my daughter was indeed behind in speech, however, not severe enough to qualify for free therapy through the state standards. As a child psychologist and a founder of a company that strives for to help parents with kids that are at risk of delays, I cannot believe that it took me four months from my initial suspicion to get a diagnosis for my own child. Four months for a 17-month-old child, it's almost a quarter of her lifetime. That's at a time where her brain is growing at the fastest pace, where she wasn't growing as optimal as she could be. Can you imagine not knowing what's going on with you for a quarter of your lifetime? Nationally, parents wait even longer, at least nine months from their initial suspicion to get a final evaluation. One in four American kids today under age five are at risk of developmental delays. This risk doubles when the parents live in poverty and has less than high school education. Research has shown that most of the parental intuition are correct. However, they are often dismissed by experts with, don't worry, your child will grow out of it sooner or later. Let's wait for a few months and see. What's even more disappointing is that there are national mandates in place to encourage universal screenings for all kids. However, only 20% of parents reported that their children actually received these screenings. There are free services in every single state to help these kids who are screened with delays. And however, less than 13% of the kids eligible who are receiving these services today. There are systems in place to help our children. However, because of lack of screening, long waits for confirmation, even longer waits to get intervention, they are stealing our kids once in a lifetime chance to grow and learn properly. Today, Anga is on par with her peers in development. And yet, this year, one million children will enter our school system with an undiagnosed disability. Next year, there will be another million kids, and so on. It is a national tragedy. And it doesn't even have to be like this. Imagine an informative system where parents are empowered to learn the signs early, to voice their concerns without judgment. Imagine a seamless system where parents and providers and teachers are able to detect delays with ease and the data will be automatically synced in real time. Imagine an integrated system 
where parents can self-refer into early intervention services and parent support groups so that these services can reach out to parents at their convenience. And lastly, imagine an interoperable system where all caretakers of the child knows exactly where the child stands in terms of development and knows exactly what to do to help that child succeed in life. So that every single child out there can reach their full potential. This is my mission, to help Anka and all the kids out there to reach their full potential by connecting their parents, educators, providers, local resources to reach universal screening, universal intervention, and ultimately better health outcomes for all. In a successful business, we are used to 2x or 3x returns. Nobel laureate James Hackman have calculated that when you invest that dollar in early childhood, the society will get 17 times return. Everyone in the society wins because our kids are able to grow up at their optimal level, are able to graduate from higher education, are able to secure better jobs, be less reliant on welfare systems, and moreover, be able to contribute to the society as a whole. Everyone in the society wins. This is the key to unlocking America's education, achievement, and income gap. To build a stronger and healthier nation, we need strong and healthy children. And we must start by investing in their early childhood. And we must start today with every single one of us learning these signs early so that we can advocate for our kids early, so that together we can change the existing system for the better. Our kids need every single one of your help because our kids don't have the time to wait any longer. Thank you.